My name is Steve Allman, and I'm the director of the Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy Clinic at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a genetic predisposition to abnormal thickening of the walls of the heart. This is present in about 1 in 500 people across the world and is present equally in males and females and across all cultures. Most people with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy have a normal lifespan and good quality of life. Many people with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy are discovered by accident when they go for a routine health checkup. An electrocardiogram may be abnormal, or a murmur may be appreciated by their physician on physical examination. Other patients come to the doctor because they're having symptoms such as shortness of breath when they're exerting themselves, or chest pressure, or lightheadedness with exercise. Those are the most common symptoms for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The treatment of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can really be divided into three categories. That's lifestyle, uh, safety issues, and treatment of symptoms. In terms of lifestyle, there's no specific diet or changes in your lifestyle that can change the natural history of the course of the disease. We do think, however, that patients with HCM should avoid competitive athletics as the most common cause for death among athletes is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. But what this means is that patients can still be active and lead healthy lifestyles. They just shouldn't be engaged in extreme sports and extreme efforts. In terms of safety issues, there is the possibility for a condition called sudden cardiac death in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. While this is more common in patients with HCM than it is in the general population, that risk is only about 1% per year. At our dedicated HCM center, part of our goal is to help assess each individual patient to determine if they are more likely to be in that high risk 1% group and would they benefit from a therapy called an ICD, or implantable cardioverter defibrillator. That involves an assessment of a number of risk factors that then a patient uh, with their family can make an individualized decision on whether they feel that an ICD may be right for them. Finally, we focus on patient symptoms. For patients that have shortness of breath or chest discomfort when they exert themselves, often this can be treated simply with common medications that help relieve those symptoms. Some patients, however, continue to have symptoms despite the medications, or in fact the medications cause side effects that are more problematic than the original symptoms. For these patients, uh, there are options that include uh, cardiac surgery to help relieve their symptoms, which has been highly effective in our experience here at Mayo Clinic. At Mayo Clinic, we have perhaps the longest standing uh, dedicated program to the care of patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This really began half a century ago and has grown to be a clinic that involves uh, six dedicated physicians, nurses, medical geneticists, cardiac surgeons, and a whole team of people that are dedicated just to patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Any and all therapies relevant to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy are available here. Additionally, if a patient has health concerns apart from the heart, the Mayo Clinic offers the best integrated health care system available to take care of all of the patient's needs. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or HCM, are long words that mean the heart muscle is too thick because of a genetic cause. This is present in about 1 in 500 people in the general population. Most people with the diagnosis do very well with a normal lifespan and a good quality of life but some patients do have symptoms that do interfere with their quality of life. It's important to recognize that as a genetic condition, each of a patient's children have a 50-50 chance of inheriting this from their parents. And so we do recommend ongoing family screening. This can be accomplished either with genetic blood testing or with echocardiographic screening. Using genetic blood testing, we can test the individual patient's blood to see if we can identify the genetic code responsible for HCM in their case. If we can find that code, then we can test that patient's siblings and children to see if they have the same genetic code. If a patient chooses not to pursue genetic testing, or if we get a non-helpful result from the genetic testing, which can occur in up to 50% of patients, then we need to rely on the echocardiogram as the screening tool. Using echocardiography, we recommend that all first-degree relatives and any athletic second-degree relatives undergo periodic surveillance. Adolescents and athletes should be screened annually, 
whereas adults who are no longer competing in athletics can be screened every five years. The reason for the specification about athletes getting screened is that if you hear about an athlete dying while participating in sports, the most common cause in North America would be hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Many patients will find when they research this disease on the web or in textbooks that sudden cardiac death is a concern for patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. In reality, though, this risk among HCM patients is only approximately 1% per year. In our clinic, we put a patient through a series of risk factors to try to determine whether they are at higher than usual risk and might benefit from an implantable cardioverter defibrillator, or ICD. The risk factors that we consider include a family history of sudden death from hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, whether the patient has had fainting episodes that can't be explained, whether abnormal heart rhythms have been detected from the thickened heart chamber, whether the patient's blood pressure responds normally to exercise, and how thick the heart muscle is. Patients with none of those risk factors can be considered of sufficiently low risk, though not zero, that consideration of an implanted device is probably not uh, in their risk-benefit uh, best interest. But patients with one or more of those risk factors need to make an individualized decision about the potential role of a defibrillator based on their family circumstances, their culture, their faith, their hobbies, and their jobs. And we will help each patient walk through those individual considerations to help make the best decision for them. For patients that have symptoms related to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, we can usually manage those by optimizing their medications. There are certain common medications which tend, which tend to make the symptoms worse in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and those can be replaced with medications which are quite effective at relieving symptoms in most patients. However, there are some patients who continue to have symptoms despite medication adjustments, and for these we have more aggressive therapies that can be considered. The current gold standard therapy would be a cardiac operation called a surgical myectomy. With this operation, the surgeon can go into the heart and thin the thick part of the heart muscle that is actually getting in the way of normal blood flow through the heart. We've been performing this surgery here for almost 50 years with a success rate of 90 to 95 percent and extremely low complication rates. As an alternative, some patients may be candidates for a special new procedure called a septal ablation. This is a procedure that is done through a small tube or catheter that is placed uh, through the arteries and veins to do the, try to do the same thing as the operation without having to do a major incision. This procedure has not been as around for long and the success rate seems to be somewhat lower on the order of 75 percent and the complication rates don't appear any better than what we see with the surgical myectomy. Our common approach for patients who are refractory to medications in terms of their symptoms is to consider surgical myectomy as the gold standard but if the patient has other medical issues that make operation more complicated, then we consider whether septal myectomy, I'm sorry, whether septal ablation uh, might be more appropriate for them. Finally, we counsel patients that they need to maintain adequate fluid hydration at all times, that they can participate in low-level aerobic activities on a regular basis as part of a generally healthy uh, cardiac lifestyle.